So as we begin with hyperbolas, you'll remember that every conic can be described um, in how you slice a, a cone, or in this case, two cones. Um, and it can also be described with distance. So I love this coolmath.com. They show you, um, they have some neat interactive ways to see why the conics are relevant. Um, and you'll notice in here that if you slice it vertically, then you get this piece um, like this. That gives you the hyperbola. So that's um, the, the definition that comes from how you slice a cone. We also can define it based on distance, and this is how Ms. Deloach drew it. Um, and that is, it's the, the set of all points in a plane such that the absolute value of the differences um, of the distance from two fixed points of the plane remains constant. Okay, so for any point, so basically, if you're at any point here along the hyperbola, this side or this side, um, the distance, so it starts here with this one, it gets to one focus, and then it gets to the other focus, and then you can subtract those values, and those values are always, um, that, that's always constant, the distance when you, when you subtract one from the other. Um, the Cool Math website, uh, the Cool Math website shows it in kind of a similar way, um, and so they're, they're really funny too, um, which as a math person, I love their humor. Um, it says, um, Here's what geometrically makes a hyperbola a hyperbola. Just like the ellipse, you start with two green dots, the foci. So they have a foci and a foci. Um, but there's a big difference. Ha <laughs> ha, difference. There's all sorts of subtraction. Um, and basically, when you take the length from that point to one focus and that point to the other focus and you subtract it, it's always the same. So the on the website, it kind of, this red dot moves and you can see those things changing. So that's how we define it by distance, which will become important when we look at some of the word problems. Okay, so um, in our, our, our equation, it looks a whole lot like an ellipse, but the big difference is that there's now a subtraction here in the middle. Okay, and if you remember, well, you should know, um, like say I have 2 minus 3, well that equals negative 1 versus 3 and minus 2, that equals positive 1. So this one will matter which comes first and we, you know, between the x term and the y term. So if I, I can't just switch the order with subtraction and expect everything to, to work out all right. Um, so when it's um, opening, when it has a horizontal transverse major axis versus a vertical, so this one will look something like this, and this one will look something like this. Um, yeah, okay, so the, um, then we find the foci. The foci are always somewhere on the, they're always kind of inside this part of the hyperbola. Um, that, okay, so our new equation, if you remember, we looked at, um, if you remember with the parabolas, I lied. If you remember with the ellipse, it was c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Well, here it's a squared plus b squared. So the thing that I remember is I always just write something that looks like Pythagorean theorem, and then I check to make sure that this sign here and this sign here are the opposite. Okay, so the hyperbola has a minus here and a plus here, whereas the ellipse has a plus here and then the minus there. Um, and so we're gonna, we'll graph one in just a second so that we can kind of see what's happening. So here's our first example. Um, they've given us the equation up here. Um, and so the very first thing we want to find is we want to find the, um, the center. And the center works in a way very similar to an ellipse. But the thing that you're going to want to make sure that you're really careful about is that, the, that you don't confuse the x and the y. And notice here the y is... Um, is first, so that means it's going to open kind of up and down like that. But then you have to keep in mind that this is the x component of your center. So your center is the point negative 1, 3. Um, so I will begin by coming negative 1, 3. Let's see if I can graph correctly. Okay, um, pretend, just go with me. Um, so in the y direction, I'm going to move 5 units. So I'm going to go up 5 to this 8 and down 5 to negative 2. And then in the x direction, I'm going to move 3. 1, 2, so to positive 2. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, and then to negative 4. And then what I'll do with those is I use that to make a box. And so then they become kind of the, the 
endpoints there. Okay, that looks kind of terrible. Can you see what I'm trying to draw? Um, and then from that box, the corners become the asymptotes. So, well, the corners don't become. I draw asymptotes through the corners of that of the box. Um, and so this one, since it's opening up and down, that tells us that this point is a vertice and this point is a vertice, and then we just start approaching our asymptotes. Okay, doing something like that. So the vertices were the points, uh, what is that, negative 1, positive 8, negative 1, positive 8, and uh, negative 1, negative 2. Okay, um, then the, the foci, we just said that that is c squared equals a squared plus b squared, uh, because it's the opposite sign here, if that is minus, that means this is plus. Um, and so c is going to be equal to the square root of, oh, I was hoping that was going to work out nicely. It doesn't. Um, what is that? Square root of 34, which is just a little bit smaller than 6. So I'm going to come 6 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, yeah, so 6, a little bit smaller than that. So it's going to be, I'm not going to do a good job with that. It's going to be somewhere in here. Oop on that and then somewhere just inside here. So when we write the, the points there, um, what we've done is we've changed our y values. So it still has the same x, negative 1. And then it's from that center was 3 plus or minus root 34. So we didn't start with a, a, a nice pretty one, but there we go. Um, and you'll notice the slope of the asymptotes, we went up 5 and we went over 3. So rise over run, the slope of the asymptotes, is um, plus or minus 5 thirds. Um, equations and asymptotes, well, I have made a thorough, me thoroughly messy job here. Um, well, I mean, it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And you can, that's an x, and you can pick a point on that line. You could pick this, this, um, this center point is on the line, on both of those lines. You could plug those in. Um, I don't know that I want to do that currently. Um, but that's back to Algebra 1. So your slopes are here, your point is here, plug it in, and you get two lines. Um, the next thing that they might ask us to do would be to write the equation. So when I look through this one, um, I need the center, which I'm finding to be 3, negative 3. Um, and since this opens on the sides, that means that x comes first. So x minus 3 squared, and then a minus y that's a negative 3, so plus 3 squared, uh-oh, is going to equal 1 as my basic format. So now I need to figure out what goes in the denominator. So, um, hang on, this is kind of junky. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is that I moved 1, 2 units there from the center along the x. Um, and so that is squared is 4, and I moved up 1, two, three, four, five. Does that make sense? From negative three to positive two, yes, that's five. So that becomes a 25 here. And so there's the equation of that hyperbola.